I would like to thank you all for listening to this broadcast. It is my prayer and desire that God will open your spiritual eyes and see the true meaning of God's word. Today we will discuss the truth about born again. Question. We often hear people claiming they are born again. What does this mean according to the Holy Bible? The word born again is popularized by evangelical churches. I will quote from Wikipedia. In Christianity, the words born again, regenerated or transformed, are synonymous with spiritual rebirth and sometimes salvation. It means having a personal faith in Jesus Christ. The term is most often used by evangelical, fundamentalist, Pentecostals, and some mainline branches of Protestant Christianity. From the Bible, how can born again be traced and clearly expounded? From the term, it is clear that God speaks in parable as it is written since Old Testament. In Psalm 78 verse 2, I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. And now this truth is revealed to Mark how Jesus Christ speaks in Mark chapter 4 verse 34. I quote, But without a parable spake he not unto them, and when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. Let us underscore this very important verse. Number 1. Did Jesus speak except in parables? From this verse, the answer is no. Everything that Jesus Christ said are in parables. Number two, to whom does Jesus Christ expound the intended meaning of his words? From this verse, Jesus Christ revealed his intended message to his disciples only. And number three, when does Jesus Christ reveal his intended message from his words? It is written, only when he is alone, with his disciples. Question. Why does Jesus Christ reveal his intended message to his disciples only? Because Jesus knows others are not interested, or if they are, they cannot understand the message anyway. Since born again refers to salvation, can we discuss this in detail? Good. Let us start from creation where we read in Genesis 1.27. I quote, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him, male and female. How could man be in the image of God when man is a physical being and God is a spirit? Man in the image of God clearly refers to Jesus Christ, a visible person. And we read he is the image of the invisible God in Colossians 1.15. What significance is man in the image of Jesus in his role as son of God upon creation? Man had the spirit of God upon creation. Jesus validated this truth quoting Isaiah told his listeners and we read in Luke chapter 4 verse 18, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me. This claim of Jesus must have been equally endowed to man. Clearly the Spirit of God must also be in man upon creation. What relation or connection is born again with this rebuilt truth? As everybody knows, after the fall of man, he was driven out of the Garden of Eden. Thereafter, man no longer had access to the tree of life. In Genesis chapter 3 verse 24. And I read, So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Clear in Revelation 22 verse 14, the tree of life symbolizes the Spirit of God. What is the consequence of losing the Spirit of God? Thereafter, man became a natural man. And this is what is revealed to Paul who recognized Jesus Christ personally. He wrote in Romans chapter 3 verse 10 up to 
verse 23. I will read. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. 11. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. Verse 12. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. And in then in verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. How many people accept the foregoing rebuke of God to man? I understand man is now a natural man. God has his way convicting man if only he is honest to himself. Here is the test and I wonder whether many people will accept this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Can people honestly admit to themselves that they cannot understand what they read in the Holy Bible? For example, is it not foolishness for trees to have a king in their search? They went to the olive tree in Judges chapter 9 verse 8, then to the fig tree in Judges chapter 9 verse 10, and went to the vine in Judges chapter 9 verse 12. All these trees refused to be king until finally they went to the bramble and accepted the position offered in Judges chapter 9 verse 14. But the bramble gave a condition in Judges chapter 9 verse 15 that the trees must fully give their trust on the bramble and accept it to be their king. Who can reveal the message of this? Why have I not read from the different commentaries of theologians and Bible scholars? My friend, the answer to your question is answered with what we discussed a moment ago. In Mark chapter 4, verse 34, we read, but without a parable, spake he not unto them. And when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. What then did Jesus mean when he told Nicodemus in John 3.3, 3, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Born again? means to realize or to see the need to reacquire the Spirit of God that was lost at the fall. But let us notice, Jesus Christ did not stop and continue telling Nicodemus. We can read in verse 5 of John chapter 3, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. It means to enter the kingdom of God means salvation. If salvation needs to be born of water, what did Jesus mean by that? Let us remember God is speaking in parables, very far from what the natural man understands. Water here appropriately means the letter of the word of God, out of several references for water. Like for example in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26 and I will read that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Then what does born of the word mean? Let us remember John the Baptist precedes the ministry of Jesus Christ baptizing in the river Jordan immersing the people. If water symbolizes the letter of the word of God in the Holy Bible this means we have to be immersed or to completely accept what is written. I will read in Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 2 that says, You shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. This is also written in Revelation 22, 18 to 19. Question. I read as people are baptized by John the Baptist, they confess their sins in Matthew chapter 3, verse 6. What kind of sin that they confess? Clearly, the sin of not accepting everything written in the Holy Bible for water symbolizes the word of God. 
How important to accept everything written in the Bible? Do we not find many contradictions, boring to read, and difficult to understand? This is precisely why it is written, God speaks parables that people cannot understand. But why does God want people to be in the dark as not to understand what is written in the Holy Bible? It is very clear now that God wants us to completely depend on Him, for He hates human wisdom. Is there a biblical support that God hates human wisdom? How many realize that this is the very first commandment of God to Adam and Eve, not to eat the fruits of the tree of knowledge of good and evil? This is the forbidden tree that symbolizes the soul whose attributes are the intellect and feeling. Can we find this? After Jesus Christ came on earth? Perhaps this is one proof for spiritual blindness because many people do not see this prohibition in 1 Corinthians 1.19 For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. In 1 Corinthians 1.20 Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? And in verse 21, For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. What does God want in a person to be born again? Have we not read the following since Old Testament time? In Isaiah chapter 28 verse 9, I will quote, whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk, and drawn from the breasts. From the lips of Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 18 verse 3, I quote, And said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted, and becomes as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Humility makes people accept everything written in the Holy Bible, which is the basis of God revealing His intended message. With this criterion of God for salvation, then how many will be saved? Well, according to Jesus Christ in Matthew 22 verse 14, He said, Many are called, but only few are chosen. After being born of water or immersed in the word of God, what is the next step? Jesus told Nicodemus, It is the need to be born of the Spirit that means baptism of the Spirit. John the Baptist spoke of this in Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Does it mean we cannot be baptized by the Holy Spirit without first having accepted everything written in the Holy Bible? Yes, because accepting everything written in the Holy Bible is the sign of true humility that our Lord wants to see in the person. The reason is, God is now free to reveal His intended message based on His very words written in the Holy Bible. What then is the real significance of born again? The Spirit of God that man lost at the fall is now regained or recovered. The person now becomes the brethren of Jesus in his role as Son of God. As we read in Romans 8.29, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Also in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21, and I quote, For even hereunto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. What are the signs that a person is truly born again? The first sign is 
before as natural man. In 1 Corinthians 2.14, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Now as spiritual man, in 1 Corinthians 2.15, But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judge of no man. 1 Corinthians 2.16, For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Now the sign number two, or the second sign, is the person does not just depend on the letter or literal meaning of the word, but wait for the intended message of God thereof. The third sign, if before man has only his physical life consisting of the body, the senses, and the soul, whose attributes are the intellect and feeling, now the fourth sign is after born again, aside from physical life, the person also has spiritual life, where the Spirit of God resides with the soul in its second role. Therefore, now the soul has two roles. Number one, for physical life, a person can fully use the intellect and feeling for person's physical well-being. Second, for spiritual life, the intellect and feeling should submit fully to the Spirit of God. How does a real born-again person conduct his physical life? Now that a real born-again person becomes a younger brethren of Jesus in his role as son of God, he should be guided by the moral lessons from the Bible. This is where some letters or literal meaning of the commandments are useful and therefore to be followed. Or how should the spiritual life of a real born-again be conducted? Since the son Jesus is considered the eldest brother, he is always looked upon in his humility in relation with the father. Will you please cite how the son Jesus humbled himself before the father? Well, the following demonstrate the degree of humility our eldest brother showed for us. First step when the rich young ruler asked him in Luke chapter 18 verse 18. The rich young ruler asked him, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Did he admit he is good? In Luke 18 verse 19, the following verse, And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good save one, that is God. Now second step, let us listen how our eldest brother humbled himself in spiritual matters. In John chapter 5 verse 19, Jesus said, Verily, verily I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. Third step, this is the height of humility that our eldest brother demonstrated for us to follow. In John chapter 5 verse 30, I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. With this criteria of humility, who can follow the Son, Jesus? This may be similar or may be the message to what our Lord said in Mark chapter 10, verse 25, and I quote, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. But the young ruler who asked our Lord, was rich in material things. My friend, don't forget, God is speaking spiritual things, or He is speaking in tongues. To the natural man, yes, it is material riches or wealth, but treasure to our Lord is what is in the heart. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 21, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Hence, Treasure to God is, in reality, it is pride that caused the fall of Lucifer. Hallelujah! With this clarification of God about born again, how can a true Christian conduct his life in order to merit being with God in his eternal kingdom? As earlier revealed by God, his chosen now have two kinds of life. Physical life, 
and spiritual life. Physical life consists of the body, the senses, the soul, intellect, and feeling. Second spiritual life is where God resides in His chosen expects the soul, intellect, and feeling in its second role to completely submit to God. Will you expound further how the chosen conduct their physical life? In physical life, the chosen are guided by the moral lessons learned from the Bible. Long ago, God gave this lesson. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 25. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways, and be wise. The chosen need to use the faculties, the body and soul, given by God by learning what is right and do it. How about the spiritual life of the chosen that is exclusive to them? What does God expect from them? As our Lord revealed, Jesus in his role as son of God demonstrated the three steps of sta or stages that they should strive to achieve. In the eyes of God, how does he look upon a person who is truly born again? Well, this is the miracle that many people cannot believe and accept. In 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Then, as it is written, they will be rewarded with this promise in Revelation chapter 3, verse 5. And I quote, He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Also in Revelation chapter 2, verse 7, To him that overcometh will I give to it of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Hallelujah! Did Jesus tell this to his disciples before? After separating the sheep from the goats, Jesus Christ spoke about the king and the reward in Matthew chapter 25, verse 34. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Brothers and sisters, it is my hope and aspiration now after you heard the pure and incorruptible word of God, you will experience the true meaning of being born again in the Spirit and walk the walk of faith. May the Lord bless you more and more.